Hi, this is Richard with another quick tip for Blender. This time we're going to be looking at the bisect tool. So you start up your new file. You've got the standard cube here. Let's go ahead and tab over into edit mode. And I'm going to turn on screencast keys for you. All right. So it's this button right here, bisect. Bam, that puppy. So we click it and then you click and you draw through it. Well, if you just did that, it's not gonna look anything like that because you have these options. After you do it, yours will probably look like this. You'll cut a line through everything that was selected, bisecting it all together. If you just select one face, go down here and select bisect, I'm going to click. It'll just cut that one face. See? But if you select everything, bisect, it's going to cut through all of that, which can be really handy. Adding a non uniform loop to everything without having to do it yourself. Sure, I can see lots of uses where that would be useful, but there's something else we can do. Now, look, if you come down here to the options, you can hit clear inner. Button just gets rid of everything out uh, inside that cut. Clear outer gets rid of everything outside. And then you can also click fill, which will add a face there where it cut everything off. So this can be really handy because we already have the knife tool. Which draws along faces and cuts them into two different faces. And we can use that for most things, but bisect, well, cutting and adding a face, that's pretty great. It'll just uh, take everything off all at once. So bisect, click and drag. There you go. It just saves the settings from the last time. Oh, look, I had that selected still. So it deleted all those faces where it was connected. It took those verts away. So you have to make sure you select everything before you click the button each time you do it. And uh, if I want to cut through that side, just take that corner off. Just go around the other way, see? Let's keep doing it. Whoops, I forgot to select everything. There we go. This is a pretty easy, pretty great way to Cut things off, create unique uh, shapes fairly quickly. And I like this so much that I have given it its own shortcut. I just have it on Q now. But I can use it whenever I want. Now, isn't that great? Let's do it one more time. And now look at that, we have this rocky thing that we could place in a scene. And it looked pretty good, it was pretty quick. Maybe put it on one of these two sides. And then you can even select everything and maybe add a bevel to it. But let's, whoops, get rid of that. And now, wasn't that great? It was awesome. But what's the problem? There are ingons. How many sides does this have? One, two, three, four. That one's okay. One, two, three, four. That one's okay. What about this puppy here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, that's too much. The more cuts you make, the more ingons you're going to have. Here's a big one. There's a big one. There's a big one. They're everywhere. Now what happens when I try to add in an edge loop? Completely stops it at every ingon. It's impossible. You can't work with it further. <laughs> the topology is horrible. You could add subdivision surface, sure. That'll quickly get it back to the right shape. Now, select everything and add a crease in there. 
to keep the same shape, but it'll switch it all to quads. So let's go ahead and do that and apply it. Now let's go back and oh my gosh, look at this topology. It added a pole in the center of every flat face so that it could connect everything as loops. That's the problem with going bi uh, bicep crazy. It worked really quickly to create some really neat stuff and then you're left with really bad topology. So it's something you gotta watch out for if you're using this tool. And that's why I took the extra time to tell you about this because uh, it's gonna give you some weird stuff. You're gonna have to retopologize. So just be careful where you bisect and where it's cutting so that you don't end up with a whole bunch of ingons and then have to retopologize um, in a way that it's really gonna make it difficult. Of course, you can get creative with this and give each of those polygons a uh, purpose. But still, I mean, it's a it's a bunch of poles in the middle of those. And I mean, it's a static mesh, so it shouldn't really matter too very much if you just leave it as faces. It should shade okay. If you're done with it after doing the bisect, good for you. And it's great. It's very fast. And with most things that are very fast, it's very sloppy. <laughs> so that's the bisect tool. I just wanted to show that to you real quick. I hope this was helpful. You can add it to your workflow. And I hope it doesn't cause topology problems for you. Definitely don't use it on something you'd want to animate unless you're super careful. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope it helped. I'll see you in the next video.